Hello everybody, welcome to Savage Ink Studios, I'm your host Ink, and before we get into our sketchbook story time, I want to give a shout out to Bridget Taylor, who made this adorable piece of fan art. Thank you so much Bridget, it's so cute and I love it, and I will have a link to her page down in the description below, so definitely go check out her stuff, obviously it's super cute. So. Today's sketchbook story time is going to be a compilation of many, many different stories of people who have been super creepy. Because I think most of us have experienced the uh, creep factor of the outside world. These are so many reasons why I don't leave my house, although some of them you'll see are unavoidable. We will get straight into said unavoidable creepness. Like when you're at work. Um, I think the first and only real like sexual harassment I've experienced at work was when I worked for a very popular um, sandwich shop, we'll call it, because I don't think we're supposed to say the names of the places that we work in case they want to like sue us for whatever. So. Um, I worked for a very popular long sandwich chain, and I think the first thing that threw me off about this job was that when I was hired, there were only like four people total working there. It was the manager, the assistant manager, me, and like one other girl who worked on my days off. So the manager and the assistant manager were like fresh out of high school and like best friends just really obnoxious dopey people who like couldn't take anything seriously and uh this was at a point in my life where I was even more like don't touch me than I am even now there was a point in time in my life where even Ivy couldn't hug me without me getting like really really tense like I did not like anybody putting their hands on me at all I've gotten a lot better about that, but um, this was during that point in time where I just did not want physical contact from other human beings at all. And this was not too long after I had started the job that I ended up having this issue. Um, the assistant manager and the manager would like corner me and try and hug me. And I, the number of times that I tried telling them, like, as respectfully as possible, like, really, please don't touch me, I'm really not comfortable with it, it makes me really, really uncomfortable, and they kept on saying things like, oh, well, the only way that you're gonna get over that is if you just let people hug you, so just let us, you know, hug you and touch your hair, and, and then you'll get used to it, and then you'll be okay. And no matter how many times I tried to express to these guys that what they were doing was making me like really really upset and even to the point where I didn't want to come to work they just thought it was a big joke and would laugh about it and had like zero respect for said personal space that I kept on asking for so I only ended up working there for maybe a little over a month until finally I was on my way to work and I had a panic attack in the car and and could not go forward at that point, I was just like, you know what, I don't even care about my bills right now. I find work relatively easy, so I'm going to find another job, but I can't, I can't go in there. I can't do this again. So that was the only work experience where I had to deal with, like, real sexual harassment. There was another situation where, you know, someone made note of the fact that I had a girlfriend and was like, why do you have a girlfriend? God put you here to make babies. And I'm just like, whoa, okay, let's not have this conversation at my place of employment. But even that, I didn't consider that sexual harassment. I just considered that like wild ignorance. So that was my work case scenario, which shows that, you know, sometimes you really, you really can't escape people just being freaking creepy and weird. But, um, some other experiences that I've had are the reasons why I don't, like, go out. You know, I, I used to do karaoke, and a couple of these experiences happened during that time, but it, it got to a point where I realized that I could not leave the house without someone being just freaking weird. 
towards me and I, I just decided that my life would be so much easier if I just stayed home. So that's what I do. I, I stay home. So my second experience, this actually is a karaoke instance. Um, as I've mentioned in one of my previous videos, for me, I need a couple drinks to not smack somebody. Uh, drinking does not make me violent. It actually makes me more docile. So I had been drinking, I was doing karaoke, having a great time, and this guy walks over and starts talking to me. And uh, I was standing by the DJ booth because I was best friends with the DJ and that's normally who I would talk to during the night. And this guy's talking to me and then all of a sudden he like gets down on one leg and grabs my thigh. And had I not been drinking, I probably would have kicked this guy in the face repeatedly until he had no teeth. But because I had been drinking and my, you know, brain was all fuzzed up, I think I just kind of screamed like a girl and jumped up over the DJ booth and like fell back into it to try and get away from this guy. And my DJ friend like picked him up by the front of his shirt and threw him out of the bar. And, um, that kind of ruined karaoke for me for a little while. I don't think that I actually went back to karaoke for a few weeks after that. And my DJ friend had to, like, tell me that, you know, not to worry about it. It wasn't going to happen again. Didn't, like, convince me to come back out. So, you know, you obviously, if you are in a bar drinking there's a much higher chance that someone is going to creep on you and you I guess just have to like adjust accordingly my adjustment is that I don't go out um and here's like a not a specific instance but something that just seems to happen me period happen to me periodically throughout my life old ladies like anywhere from like 40 to frail and gray haired all of these old ladies seem to think that it's okay to touch my hair for some reason I cannot count the number of times that different women have walked up to me and stuck their fingers in my hair um, I don't know if they feel entitled because it's colored and they think that I'm like asking for it or something or because when I use conditioner in my hair it like floofs up and looks like a baby duckling or something but for whatever reason every woman on the planet seems to think that it's okay for them to just stick their hands in my hair and I hate it and it makes me feel really really uncomfortable all the time um here's another instance of like a mix of the last two I guess uh, me and Ivy had gone out and we were actually leaving I think it was like a cafe or something that we had gone to like have coffee and talk and we were on our way out and some lady, some just random chick that we did not know, tried to stop us and was like reaching out to like touch our shoulders and was like, girls, girls, hi, hi, stop, wait. And I'm just like, don't touch me. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Get off, please. Like, I don't understand what it is about people feeling like it's okay just reach out and touch someone that you don't know and like I understand that there are places that people come from where being in close quarters with somebody is more common you know New York City or China just places with really high populations where you can't get into an elevator without being smushed up against somebody but where I am from is not that place and I'm not used to just people trying to grab on me so it's still like it just Every time that someone tries to do it, it just genuinely surprises me. Like, have you never heard of personal space? Why are you putting your hands on my body? You know? Does anybody else get that? If any of you have had an experience where it felt really, really obvious that someone probably shouldn't be touching you, but they acted like it was the most normal thing in the world, please leave your comments down in the comment section below. I would love to know that I'm not the only person who just has their personal space invaded on a regular for no reason um <clears throat> all right so here's like a non-physical creep thing that again is unavoidable because this things like this happen at work 
<sighs> the phrase that I hate. I hate this phrase so much. Something, 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 because you're too pretty, genuinely bothers me. And I had some, said something over the last few months at my job, joking about, you know, oh, they're just going to fire me. And some guy at the register was like, oh, you're too pretty to get fired. And I'm pretty sure my face probably just went, like, and fell 50 feet. Because, do, do people not realize how creepy that is? Like, it's, you can tell the difference between a compliment and someone being weird. Like, why be weird? You know? Like, just don't, okay? To everybody watching this, do not be weird to your retail workers, okay? They're not smiling at you and being nice to you because they want to get hit on. They're smiling at you and being nice to you because it's their job and because they don't want to get fired and they want to be able to pay their rent, okay? And another one that I absolutely abhor is, Honey, you would be so pretty if you smiled. Nothing else is more likely to get me to glare at you like I want to see your body in a ditch than someone telling me, Oh, honey, you'd be so pretty if you smiled. Like, does anybody else find that super insulting? Like, not that I have any interest whatsoever in being pretty, because I really don't. You know, if somebody calls me sir, my... My heart kind of flies a little bit, you know? I, I enjoy being called sir, it makes me feel good. And when people call me miss, my skin crawls, okay? So obviously, I don't have a goal to be pretty. So, it's, it's not a compliment to me. I mean, like, and even if I was interested in being pretty, you would be pretty if you smiled. Like, does anybody actually smile to that comment? Does that happen? I can't see that happening, but who knows, maybe that's just me, maybe I'm just a cranky bastard who hates everybody, it's a distinct possibility. Um, okay, here's, uh, going way, way back, high school, this kid, who I genuinely thought at the time was just, like, making fun of me. And then later, when I found out that that was not the case, I got even more uncomfortable. Like, getting picked on was not a big deal for me because it happened all the time. I was so used to it by high school. There was this kid who used to ask me out all the time. A guy kid, so obviously the answer was, you know, would have been no if I ever gave him even the time of day to say no. I usually just ignored him and kept walking because... Again, you know, I just sort of assumed I was getting picked on. This kid would walk up to me and ask me to prom once, and I think I actually laughed and then walked away. But consistently throughout the three years that I was in high school, this kid kept on approaching me and asking me out, and because of the type of people that he hung out with, I always assumed that it was just a setup and a joke, and I kind of just ignored him. And then after high school ended, I found out that he was genuinely serious that whole time and I'm just like you know my response probably was not the kindest which was not intentional on my part because I did not think that he was serious had I known that he had been serious I would have told him like look dude I'm not interested in guys but thanks anyway but like if if a girl tells you no like a hundred times no I do not want to go out with you why would you keep on asking if someone shows that they are genuinely disinterested in going out with you, why? Why? You know? I, I genuinely, I just, I don't get it. And, like, I think this sort of falls under, like, I've noticed, not, like, with me specifically, but just with women in general, that guys who ask girls out, girls who just say like no thank you or I'm not interested that's never good enough the only thing that women seem to be able to say that gets creepy guys off their back is I have a boyfriend and even sometimes that doesn't work because I've had people show a genuine interest in me and try to respond politely by saying you know oh well I'm flattered but I'm not into guys and the number of creepy, creepy dudes who are just like, oh, well, 
you don't know until you've tried it, and if you tried me, then you would never go back to girls again. And I'm just like, you are not making a good case for yourself at all. And I've seen that with myself. I've seen that with so many people that saying that you're not interested just because you're not isn't good enough. Saying that you're not interested because you're not attracted to men just sounds like a challenge or something that they have to like prove that they're going to be the one who changes that. And the only thing that sometimes stops them is saying that you're basically owned by another man. That kind of bothers me. That a lot bothers me. Because it's kind of sickening that the only thing that stops some guys is them feeling like they're going to offend another man for hitting on you. Like, why can't you just respect that someone with a vagina doesn't like you? Because you're a creep. You know? Like, why isn't that enough? So, yes, I've had a few of those. Um, my littlest brother, my mom's youngest son, he was the one I was talking about in the diabetes video. Um used to actually like if someone hit on me in the store he would you know tug on my arm and be like mommy dad's blah 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 and that like would usually give these weirdos a hint like oh crap she's got a kid and the dad's waiting somewhere so I better leave her alone and in the area that I grew up in like when I was living with my mom it was just not a great neighborhood and <laughs> Being like a young girl, 13, 14, I mean, even when I was cross-dressing, I guess, or trying to, I had every intention of trying to get a penis when I turned 18, so the way that I dressed reflected that, and even dressed like that, there would be guys who would stop me out on the side of the road at 13, 14, and be like, oh, hey, you got, uh, you got the time? No. You got some change? No. Oh, well, can I get your phone number? Dude, you don't have a watch, you don't have any money, and you're still, like, hitting on girls like they're gonna give you their number? Seriously? And my general response was just, you know, well, that depends on how you feel about, you know, 10 plus years in prison, because I'm 13. And most of them would back down after that. But some of them did not, and if that doesn't tell you what kind of neighborhood I grew up in, then nothing will. So, I hope you enjoyed my compilation of stories, I hope you enjoyed my piece, I apologize for the quality of the last five minutes of that, uh, this picture took me like an entire day, so the very last of it was like two hours that I had to try and smush into a five minute video so this wouldn't go on forever. Um, so, yeah, I hope you liked what I had to say. I hope you liked my piece. And definitely go check out Bridget Taylor. Her stuff's super cute. And I will see you guys in the next one.